So as many of you know, microRNAs work by fine-tuning the expression of many protein encoding genes. So the identification of microRNAs, their mRNA targets, and their regulatory networks can provide insights into the roles in diseases and cellular functions. Now, researchers in this field often face many challenges when it comes to the analysis and interpretation of their microRNA data. So today, we will see how you can use IPA to overcome some of those challenges. So with IPA's microRNA target filter, you will learn how to identify biologically relevant mRNA targets using your microRNA data set. And you will learn how to further refine your microRNA targets when you have a corresponding mRNA data available. Now, if you don't have any mRNA data or you would like to use a different mRNA data set that you did not generate, but you read about somewhere, you will learn how you can find and use relevant mRNA data by taking advantage of IPA's large repository of data sets and expression analysis coming from the public domain. And in addition to working with data sets, you will learn how you can take advantage of IPA's extensive knowledge base to build custom networks for a microRNA of interest and study how it is expressed across different diseases and tissues using Land Explorer. So IPA's microRNA target filter lets you upload, analyze, prioritize, filter, and visualize microRNA, mRNA data and relationships all within a single tool. Today, you will see how you can easily upload your microRNA data sets and identify mRNA targets. You can then prioritize microRNA, mRNA pairs that are most relevant to your study and filter based on biological content, such as a particular disease like cancer or specific types of molecules like enzymes, receptors, for example. After you have identified the most relevant mRNA targets, you can then visualize the microRNA, mRNA relationships in interactive networks that allow you to determine how these microRNAs and mRNAs can impact pathways, diseases, functions, and much more. Now, one of the key problems many people encounter when working with the microRNA data is that they end up with something like this. A table with thousands of identified targets. And many of them don't know what to do with this table in order to identify which of these targets are the most biologically relevant to them. Now a question many ask is how can I relate my microRNA to specific diseases or cell lines or tissues if my microRNA regulate more than a thousand genes? This becomes a challenge and hours of literature research for many without IPA. Now the microRNA target filter, which utilizes IPA's powerful regularly maintained database, allows you to take this list of thousands of targets and refines it to a smaller set that is more relevant for your research by filtering for biological content such as specific diseases. Oops. Sorry. For filtering for content such as biological diseases. Um, so for example, uh, usually you can ask, can I filter by a specific pathway like ILK signaling in the cell type that I'm studying, 293 cells. And using these different filters right here, you can easily do so. This is gonna save you hours that would have been spent in the literature. Now, many of you mentioned the registration that in addition to working with a microRNA data set, you also have mRNA data. With the microRNA target filter, you just like you can take advantage of mRNA data coming from their experiments to refine this target list. Here, you are comparing both microRNA and um, mRNA data sets and identifying targets coming from your mRNA data. Now, when you have um, experiential, experiential expression values, such as full change that you see here, um, you just like you often ask, how can I narrow down my list of targets using expression patterns coming from my data? In IPA, you can easily do this by clicking here. With this feature, you can prioritize mRNA targets based on the 
change of expression observed in your data. Given that microRNAs are involved in post-translational regulation of gene expression, user can easily filter for pairings with inverse relationships. For example, and discover that when near 150 is up, target mRNA P53, which is key uh, for cancer, is down in their data set. So with IPA, you can easily narrow down your target mRNA list based on biological content and expression patterns. Now, once you've narrowed down your target list, users like you uh, begin to build a hypothesis and ask, how do these microRNAs and mRNAs interact? How do they affect downstream functions or diseases? In IPA, getting further information about these promising mRNAs and microRNAs is simple. I'm displaying them as a network. So today we're going to imagine a scenario where you are studying melanoma a cancer that arises from the pigmented cells um, in the epidermis. As part of your research, you obtain microRNA and mRNA expression profiles derived from normal samples and from samples from patients with metastatic melanoma. And you want to identify mRNA candidate markers for this progressive disease state. So the first question you may ask is what mRNAs do my microRNA for my data set target? So we're going to use the microRNA target filter to answer this question. Now today we're going to start with the microRNA data set. Uh, the format and upload of microRNA data is very similar to uploading other data sets in IPA. It only really requires a list like this, this list of microRNAs. And it can be in a text, Excel, CSV, or diff formats. Now you can also include differential expression values like fold change, log ratio, and other values such as p-values, um, although it's not required. We do highly recommend um, to have differential expression values to fully uh, utilize the features uh, with the microRNA target filter. So with this, I'm gonna go ahead and go into the software. So to upload your data set and start the analysis, we're gonna go ahead and go into create new and then select microRNA target filter. Here we're gonna go ahead and upload our data set. So I'm gonna go and select my microRNA data set for metastatic melanoma. And so once we're in the data set upload manager page, I'm going to let IP know that this is my ID column. And when I do this, you can see that all of your microRNAs have been mapped. If you want to know further information about it, you can just click on show details. And you can see which ones have been mapped, and those that have not. Now, IP recognizes um, various uh, identifiers for microRNAs. But I just wanna let you know that if you want to use the microRNA target filter, you need to make sure that you map to the mature microRNAs like you see here. Now I'm gonna let IP know that this column is gonna be my observation column. Once I do that, IP automatically detects that I have differential expression values. So we're going to save and use this data set with the microRNA target filter to identify mRNA targets for microRNAs with differential expression in melanoma. So I'm gonna click here, save this data set. Now this warning is letting you know that you don't have any metadata associated with the data set. And in this case, that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay and save it to my folder. Kyogen. Sample to Insight.